Yes, it's good. Okay, sounds good. Okay, so take a look at day 18 notes. Uh, just paste it directly into the Zoom. Let's go to the chat. Okay, so that's the working doc uh, in the chat. So continuing right along here. So yesterday, yeah, we're uh, it's any day to install the walls. We're we're working on the inside. Let me share my screen. Um, so take a look at share screen. <clears throat> okay, day eighteen. Uh, good stuff. I mean, the, we are learning to move along in the digital world and a physical world together uh, with the digital model pieces coming into it remote con collaborators putting uh, things into it too I noticed the stairs were inserted the bathroom has been inserted now uh, we've been adding the roof and things like that on the the ground this is what's been going on yesterday so we were up to uh, this is the exterior walls the first one and the second one one through tw 23 then up to 47 that's the, the exterior walls the interior you don't have to worry about until we put we frame the house in close it in we discussed what required what's required for the house to get closed in um first story walls second story platform second story walls roof structure insulation box up to the osb and then we're all closed in so we can actually start working on the interior uh, details we went through, uh, one detail we went through yesterday we talked about, uh, for example, and you see here in a CAD, uh, we looked at how do you mount a little angle on a roof where uh, the roof is sloped because there's no such a thing as a sloped roof, so it's actually 1.2 degrees over 192 inches, so there's a very slight rise over the length so that water can drain off. And that's been put in and Matt brought up a good question actually about the structure there and, and I actually do want to revisit that. Let's put a second one on the front of that and turn it into a little cavity where we can put insulation. So that's good on two, two counts. One, uh, it's true about load paths. If you put the roof sitting on this roof riser here, just a two by four, then all the load is on a, I'm going to zoom in even further there, all the load in this example here, this is the roof riser that creates the four inches over 16 feet. Um, all the load is on going down the wall. I'll, I'll draw an arrow, but here's where the load is going. That's the weight of the roof. Snow loads, everything else. Uh, it is a good idea to spread it over the entire two by six area of the walls. Um, Katrina pointed this out. And second issue here is how do you attach the roof rafters, which are a box, big box. Um, it's like in this picture, what's the roof look like? It looks just like this, looks like just like the floor, the second story floor, except the second story floor has a cutout for the, for the stairs. Um, but this entire structure of the roof joists that's sitting on our, on this detail here, with the load path going down, can somebody fix that? Uh, thank you. Uh, so load path there. Let's add a second one here. Um, so that was actually Joshua, right? So let's do that. And that way we can have the, the riser module be this U-shape with insulation in between. So we can load the insulation, preload the insulation. The second detail is what is that? It's called hurricane ties. So both the front of the roof and the back of it, all the joists, just like for the first first story, uh, second story floor, you're using hurricane ties. And that's manifest in, uh, in the CAD, like some of the CAD detail. I'll show that detail, just rerun that again. Um, opening up pre-CAD 16. There's the detail of what, uh, of how you connect these large platforms, these 16 by 32 floor or roof platforms, which are largely identical, how do you connect them to the walls? Um, it's not in the house assembly master. I would go to the CAD files. Where do you find that those details? We have a number of details under SH2 CAD. 
So in the index, if you go to the index, <clears throat> select details 2.8. It's got some of these details, like for example, the blocking detail. How do you attach the platform? Applies to the roof and the second story platform. Blocking detail. Let's let's look at the hurricane ties because that's what has to happen. So this is the floor on the first floor. There's the the face blocking that. Oh, where are my ties here? So they're hidden. Um, hurricane tie right there. Hurricane tie one. Th those are what we're talking about. Metal. Uh, nailed in on a joist. And this applies to the roof. This applies to the the second story platform. So one of these has to go on the incline part two. So if we look at the detail back from our picture. Um, this one open this one so if, if we have this detail here if we didn't have another block here like this 2 by 4 here then we wouldn't have anywhere to attach the the hurricane ties to they they're short their their span is not too long it's only a few inches a couple inches so if you had that span there you wouldn't be able to attach to the the second story walls so uh, we're gonna need that u-shaped u-shaped uh, riser module let's call it riser uh, in this, uh, so in this one, just reviewing the layers, roof riser, it's that thing. But it's really just, I mean, the roof riser, to make it more accurate, it's really on the back side there. And then everything above that kind of tilts. So you can, can take all of this here uh, and actually tilt it to represent um, what's actually going on in real life. If I could do that. So just a little tilt of 1.2 degrees. That's what's happening there. And a riser actually is, riser is straight. Uh, so everything up to this point is straight and then we got a slight, slight incline um, on a flat roof. Um, let's do, uh, let's take a look at the so, so that covers the roof riser detail. Uh, I think we're still inserting some of the parts like the, um, I noticed that the flooring, like all the plywood on the flooring has been inserted here um, in the house master file. So let's open up the new additions just to discuss what, what we got into. So for the house assembly master, um, plywood on the floor I saw yeah, so let's let's go through some of these details. Uh, plywood has been inserted all over. That's good. Um, I noticed the the riser. We already have. Let's see. So so now the file has been separated into second story and first story because we're going beyond the one meg upload limit to the wiki but it's also convenient so it's actually a little easier to handle so this is this is our second story um, what do I want to see here where's the roof there it is so the roof is actually that's the plywood that's at the proper angle so that's Ken's uh, and the point is this is about divide so this is digital housing right like we put in that plywood it's floating in midair but it's correct it's actually correct we we calculated how far up you have to go based on all the layers here there are very well defined heights for each of the the modules here now be an exam question okay what's the height of each but if you if you simply go up with the specific numbers, uh, let's actually add them in for reference. So this is our cheat sheet here for heights. But we've heard a number like 121.125. What was that? That was the base of the second story walls. That's the Z height starting from the first story walls. Not the sill plate, but actually we started that 
So to make that explicit here, uh, starting right there, first story walls, 121.125 to second story wall base above the OSB. So we just so when we started doing the second story, we started with the wall panels themselves. So we measured 121.125 from so this is explicitly where it's at. Let's draw that out as an arrow. Oh yeah, so let's share this doc since I don't think it's editable yet. It always keeps keeps copying it as not editable. Editor. So help me out if you can. Um, done. So two arrows there. So where's the 121? It's two there. Right there. And then we just count more. What's the second story walls? Just keep counting one by one. So just to explore how in a digital breakdown we can say, oh, the roof is ex the OSB, which is already in a CAD. We don't have rigid insulation box. We don't have the roof structure. We didn't even have the roof riser when we did that. But we could already know where exactly that OSB is going to be because it's a digital design. And because of that, we're able to work as a team putting in the different modules because they have well-defined locations. And the design is actually, this is designed for simple. It's designed to meet certain needs uh, of simplicity so it's understandable and swarmable. Like imagine like the standard American house, right? With all the gable roofs and whatever, much more complex, right? We could not easily get into an exercise like this here, hoping to get all the roofs and all the rooms and all of that because of the complexity. So just one vision here is just, just for everybody to, to see where this could go, is that there's 3,000 empty lots in Kansas City that are in the land bank. How about we don't build it, we have people build it, we teach people rapidly and we swarm on that and we knock them out in rapid time with large swarms. Like think of a, a thousand person swarm because the uh, designs are easy to master uh, with augmented reality or virtual reality training you can train people rapidly ideally. Uh, Jesse made the example yesterday of took two hours for some this was some medical procedure medical device operation were, this was actually military application he said it was a 16 week training program the same guys uh, another group took two hours of AR, VR goggles, and the two hour group augmented did better than the 16 week training. And the 16 week training people were pissed. So, uh, possibly this is, this could apply to housing. Now, the critique, critique of AR and VR for housing is it's going to be harder if you're actually lifting live loads, heavy things. That may be a little challenging, but at least procedures. When it comes to detail, like you wire, wire something up or, or screw something together, that's probably doable well with, with AR, VR, which, I mean, the, the manhandling of things, that's just one aspect. That's, that's not the greater part of the build. The greater part of the build is by far uh, the small procedures that are screw this thing in, uh, things like that, tie this, cut this, which are all learnable tasks. So imagine having large swarms do this and do this in rapid time. So I think the, you know, the solving housing thing is, why are we building? Have the people that are gonna live in the buildings build it. That's already part of the, the model for Habitat for Humanity. I think we can definitely use more of that. And especially in like crisis zones or like emergency areas where you gotta rebuild something from scratch really quickly, uh, that could definitely lend itself to swarm builds. The digital model allows that, so, so just to, complete this here. How do we calculate the OSB? Well, we took that, the 121.125, we added 95.625, which is almost eight feet. That's the, that's exactly what our modules are. That's effectively eight feet minus just a little bit, minus the standard three eighths of pre-cut studs. Second story top plate was 1.25. Keep going. 
You guys do it. What's the roof structure insulation box OSB? So we can add up to a magical number for the height of the OSB. At least the one edge, because the other one is rises a little bit. That's 1.5. This is all inches. What's roof structure? 11.25. Insulation box with rigid insulation to avoid condensation issues. That's four inches. And then you got OSB. So you add up those numbers, and then you get a magical magic number for okay, now the height of OSB from right here, which is where we started our digital model. This is the zero Z point. We all started here and then we lifted things up into place to to organize them. Uh, that means the sill plate and foundation are at negative Z values, so that's zero, ground zero. Um, so you can do this. Um, next. So let's do this, let's continue. So we want to do a little practice. So today we're going to get, uh, as we see on the par part two here, we're going to get to the, the windows. Uh, actually, uh, let's do that actually later for the afternoon session uh can we maybe like gather back here like before we go out into the shop like 12:45 or so so we can just go over the windows real quick uh because they're in the process so we've got a bunch of these modules that are regular regular modules that we've been working on we've been putting them in the insulation siding and sill gasket and electrical building all that in there uh we're just moving down the row here we're at uh at uh, 17 so we're now on 18 uh, where there's windows which have actually an electrical outlet so uh, we're just moving down the row and then to 24 through 47 uh, but yeah windows will learn how to do that windows is where you have to pay a lot of attention because it's a hole you got to seal up all the water holes around the window there's a lot of potential for water infiltration so what you do is things like Z flashing where uh, you go above the window or like it's called uh you got z flashing in between seams of plywood you've got um drip cap above the window and just uh, self-adhering waterproof barrier just all around the edges when you frame that up after you put on the the house wrap so details like that um so that there's no water getting inside and then trim around that but we'll go let's go through that right after. For now let's do a, an exercise. So we, we continue practicing just practical detail. Um, let's take a look at the first floor. Look at the, the stairs since I saw them in and, and the landing. It looks like hmm, we've got... Uh, so is Jeff on the call here? Jeff maybe you can update us on the status of the stairs. I don't know if you can talk. You know, Jeff, so Jeff's remote and he's been actually working on parts. I'm not at home. I don't have my headset. Okay. No headset. Okay. Uh, but maybe um, in the chat box, uh, I'll download the file here, the master file. But let's see, how accurate are the stairs now? I know we've been working on refining geometry. We're almost there. And that was great. We basically said, okay, we've got so much rise defined by the digital model. We've got, in fact, exactly the 121.125 as the rise to the second story as the first, well, the first, what do we call that, the, the floor, the subfloor. That's actually the subfloor of the second story. Uh, when we say subfloor, we mean the second story, um, what's an easy name for them, for that level? Second story. It's called up to the second story. The top of the OSB, which is the, it's not OSB, it's plywood. Uh, top of the plywood begins the second story. So we need to get the, the stairs up there. Now we've got a little, still a quarter inch layer above that, which is actually the, the flooring. We're using plywood that's stained and it's going to be basically floor planks, quarter inch. But I don't think... I think we can be okay by, um, like within a quarter inch. I think quarter inch is a final little tiny step. I think I don't think that matters. I mean, the stairs want to be exact same height for each tread. 
Uh, are we okay on one half a uh, quarter inch off on the last tread? Uh, will that trip up anybody? I, I don't know. I don't think you can notice a quarter inch. So I think we'll be. Let's see. Is a quart can a, can two stair treads be off by a quarter inch? Like between the between the end of the floor and then the start of the stairs. It's like it's like that much. You, like if you're dragging your feet and kind of. Let's see what Google says. Um, I'm gonna tell you it's it's the same. It has to be the same. I wonder if the I wonder if we have to account for that quarter inch um, on the very top where we have the flooring. So above the OSB is gonna be flooring, which we put on after the walls are in, actually, because it's a finished floor. Um, maybe we can consider that if it's an easy change. I'm not sure how critical that is, but let's download the model. See where we are. And by the way, uh, look at my lock here. Just want to um, let me share share screen here again. But let's talk about the the time graph. Uh, so obviously, there's since there's a bunch of us here, we're kind of exploding the numbers actually more than at any time in history. So that's pretty good. But do keep your log. The idea there is like if we're collaborating on a team, and especially if there's more people, uh, ideally we go to any person's <laughs> log, which are indexed actually right here. This all this thing. Um, can go to some person's log and see what they've been up to. Uh, you can see their latest links, um, updating what people are doing. So all of us are here. I guess we don't have, oh yeah, there's Jeff is in there even. Um, uh, but the idea there is put simple hyperlinks. And that, that helps us orient. So you can, if you don't know where to find somebody's work, go to their log, it should be there. Um, okay, so in a model, let's download. So you can do that too if you want to do it real time. Download uh, from the CAD, download first floor, which I noticed visually quickly that, oh yeah, it has the stairs in there. So we can talk about what's under, yeah. So then I look, just look at the history briefly. We say, you know, what's the latest? Is there anything yet? It looks like progress. Sometimes you want to download files that are not the last ones, if maybe. Um, but yeah, if you want to download the last one, so let's look at stairs, or the first floor. Um, first floor file right here. Awesome, and yeah, that's correct. So, so this is cool. This is stringer -less, stringer less stairs. What are the stringers again? Stringers are the cutout, the stepwise cutout, cut out of a long two by twelve, which is a lot of work. Got to cut out stringer. Um, is it like the, side? the sides. Uh, I think we have that in uh, one of these. If you're wondering what that is, naturally you would go to the stair design guy on the wiki. Design guide. <laughs> stair design guide. Uh, uh, just to review what a stair is, a stair is made of. We went through this the other day. So go into stair design guide here, slide 10. Those are the parts. The stringer, actually this is not labeled, but the stringer, yeah, maybe let's draw that in. Um, so the stringer is this shape here, this, this, that. It's a long piece of, piece of wood that's got the profile of the stairs. So it's this thing. That's called the stringer.
Max rise is seven and three quarters. Stringers are the industry standard. We're just hanging the stairs. On the sides, that means we got to double the treads. The treads, um, if you look at the codes, it's fine if you have three stringers, one down the middle. If you have two by 12 lumber, once you get to a span of about three or four feet, which we have, we have like what, uh, I forget exactly how much we have. We have a little under four. You need a four by equivalent. That's why we're doing two. We are doing two of these uh, two by twelves like this. And, and this is cool. This is, um, it's all right. That's, that works now. The only thing on here is these two by fours are under the stringers, under the, sorry, under the treads. That's the only difference. Um, so I'm not sure what, what happened there. But the two by fours are under the treads. And the two, and those, uh, so let's hide a few things here. Hide a few panels or look at it from the back. Those supports are on one and the other side. That's what the, the stairs actually hang on. And because you have two two by twelves, you're fine. You're structural down the middle. You, you can s step on this without the steps cracking on you. Um, the challenge about three stringer stairs is that those three stringers have to be very precise. Otherwise, you're squeaky, and they're just a lot of work. So here, it's a simple way because we have we have. Uh, we already have walls around this. That's why we're able to do just hang the stairs in this easy way without doing stringers. So that means we just mark out the, the heights of all these steps and hang these on the walls, put them under the treads. So let's see, that's one piece. So yeah, we have to modify this file. But let's, let's examine the height of this, this stair. Uh, so what I would do is I would actually take the stair. Uh, let's see, and and where are we exactly on the bottom of the stair? Mm -hmm. Okay, one more detail here. There's a landing of six inch height at the bottom, uh, so we can actually get away with less with this tread. Uh, we're gonna have a landing here. So if we, so what I wanted to do is check out the landing. The, the landing requirements are, it has to be three feet long. Let's see if we have three feet first of all. So let's see what plane, what plane are, are we in? We're in the XZ plane. Let's just start drawing some stuff in there for the stairs. Uh, so my first question is, do we have three feet to the wall? So I guess from there to there. What is that distance? Now we need to move the stairs back a little bit. Um, what's our rise currently? So the rise, I would see, okay, that's okay. What is our rise? The rise would be this. That's our rise, this vertical here is our rise. What do we got there? 7.5. Well, we're allowed 7.75, so probably we could um, remove one tread. Oh yeah, so but that's already done here. If we go, if we remove this one tread here, what do we get? Do we get 36? So yeah, so let's let's get rid of this this one bottom tread because we're gonna do a two by six platform here. So let's get rid of this one since that's we know that's not enough. It's 27. So how long is this now? Do we have three feet? Yeah. So we need to get rid of the first stair. 
that's fine. That's great. One less. One less. So we have a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14. And this is the top plane. Now, is this going to be exactly 11? So this is the top plate. What do we have above the top plate? We have the second story platform plus OSB. So that level there would want to be 11.25 plus 0.75, so exactly 12. So is this 12 above the top plate? Let's measure that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's about, well, yeah. In fact, it's exactly where, let's see, what is that? Um, if we zoom in here, so this is exact here. Twelve point two five. It's as if we already considered what what we just talked about the flooring. So this is actually perfect. Now, um, so it turns out these stairs are perfect as they are. Um, if we get rid of the first step, that's all. Um, so actually I wouldn't change anything on these stairs outside of re removing the first step. And therefore, what happens on the detail here? Uh, so if we remove the first step, we need a landing. And that's what we were going to do. Because the landing, it also allows us to... Uh, so if we review the, the design... Uh, we talked a little bit about this landing here. So this is this landing. That's where it is. That's the landing. So we can start the second, the, yeah, probably run the landing like back to the wall. And therefore, uh, the first step could be on top of the landing and then probably what do we do there? Just um, got to trim it up at the end so it looks neat. But probably, I haven't thought about the trim detail there, but if we have, say, 2x6 lumber here, uh, possibly like another 2x6 and another 2x6 could be the finished surface there. Yeah. Uh, but let's do the, the landing then all the way to the wall. So let's actually do this. Who's going to do this? So. Um, digital exercise. So uh, it can get confusing within the model that we're we're doing. Okay, this is like okay. Um, we're in this house, big file. We know where that corner is. It's it's at the far edge, which is 16 by 32. So we can uh, get the sketch of where where we are exactly, and we can say uh, how far back do we go. Uh, who can tell me how far back we go here to, to where the stair, like the stair wall starts? What de defines the stair wall, where it starts? We define it as the beginning of the stairway opening. We know that from the second floor, and we should see it. So actually, I think we have to go back to the, not this master, let's go to the other master new one. Who can tell me what the distance is from the right wall looking at the house from the front? From the right corner, so where, where are we? This corner here. So this is what we want to take a look at right now. Where does the wall on the first floor begin? So we've got Look at that. Oh, that's good. It's it's individual. Um, that's where the landing's going to end because the wall's going to start right below. We'll we'll start the wall like right there. That would make sense. Start the first floor wall right there. 
people see that? The wall's going to be under the stairs. This is the second floor. So basically you can look at this. In fact, it's useful to take a look at this pattern here. Um, but yeah, we, we, we know what those distances are. So what is the distance between the edge, this far corner, which the coordinates there, what are the x, y coordinates there? Where I'm, so I'm, I'm here. What x, y coordinate am I? Who can tell me that? We're in a Cartesian system. We define a plane with the with the origin being at zero zero bottom left. So what is that coordinate x y? Thirty two sixteen. Yes, it's thirty two sixteen. Exactly. Now, what's the length of landing of interest? We're going to start the land since the wall is to there, right? Landing's gonna start there. Is that true? You say it again? I'm asking where the landing where's the landing gonna start? Well it has to start right at the wall. Now, if we have interior plywood plywood on a wall, what happens there? Uh, so Yeah, yeah, because the procedure is probably what makes sense, so we don't have to do any funky cutouts around the stairs. We put in the siding before we put in the stairs. That's the most sensible way to do it. Otherwise, you have to cut out all around the stairs, which doesn't make sense. So you're going to have the siding in before you go into the stairs. So you have siding, therefore you're going to be three-eighths which is the siding away from that wall and also this wall uh, well there's there's the wall thickness there which is not drawn here that's where the well so let's do a sketch uh, so so remember this we were at a 32 by 16 for this corner we have to go in by the thickness of the wall and we also have to go in by the thickness of the interior plywood because we put the plywood in before. And it's going to stretch all the way to the, to the beginning. Uh, let's end uh, the most sensible way. Okay, so if I'm looking right here, what's the most sensible place to end the bottom stairs, bottom story walls? Um, i give you two choices, like here or here. Or even here, because there's a, 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 on the second floor, there's a wall here, a two by four wall here. So maybe we could even go all the way to like around here. But where which of those three points would we want to end the bottom walls? The first floor walls. Like I mean we can negotiate that, but what, what makes sense structurally and spatially? So this is a design exercise. Do we end the bottom wall here, there, further, or even further? Or even shorter? So five choices. Where do we put it? We gotta decide. We're designers. <laughs> We're learning to design a house. Where do we put it? What makes most sense? It's spanning the gym. It's spanning over the gym. So not, yeah. Not the first place. Maybe the second, second place? Or, or second or even further. Yeah. I like that. I'll I'd end it like right there because if um because then you're just using extra materials to support the the second story, if you have it there, yeah, you'll support everything on the second story load path. Because the load path would be, what's on the second story is going to be transferred through this, this joist. So your wall wants to end there to support all the load. That would be the most ideal place. You can do it out, but it's not, that doesn't help anything. So let's put it to right there. Exactly, to that, that corner. So underneath this corner is where our wall is going to end, therefore that's where our um, our landing will end. So we'll end the landing there. And where do we end the landing in terms of this distance here, like this way, the in the y direction? Do we 
Well, that that's shown in the picture. How far out? How far out does the landing go? Just to the wall. Yeah. Okay. So now we we have a concept of what the landing is defined by the walls and defined by this uh, the interior wall here, which is these walls here are the only interior load bearing walls. Everything else is not load bearing. Um, and why is it load bearing? Because the cutout for the stair, you've got those joists hanging there. You got to support them. Okay, then let's go to our sketch. So where do we go? So we go to, uh, let's go to, what's the best way to start? Well, let's just start from scratch real quick, so quick since we are good at this. And we're going to say, okay, we're at 1632. Let's start. Let's do, uh, let's do this. Let's draw our 16 by 32 or 32 by 16 base. Let's draw in where the walls are going to end. So step at a time. So tag team it let's do so I'll, I'll start it so I'm gonna go let's let's do the so this is gonna be our state our uh, landing so we're gonna design the landing oops new no cancel new here so stay, save this as the landing all right, so we're what plane are we in? How are we going to draw this? Let's look at it from the top because we're going to need to have uh, it's like a platform for the because it's a platform we draw platforms from the top because they have um, geometry going towards the back. If you look at it from the front, you can't draw what's behind it. So we got it easiest to look at it from the top. So let's do the landing structure, which will have, and on top of the structure, what we've done typically is use one by four planks um, as the actual walking surface. Like in the CD home, if you notice, there's a landing when you go right in a house, and also the floor is also one by fours, one by four planks. That's what we've been typically using. So let's let's look at it in the XY. So once again, but we gotta locate it. We have to locate it as so we do this thing. What I'm gonna do is make sure that's at the point. So it's identified here we've gonna we're gonna do thirty-two feet. Then do thirty-two feet or no it's the thirty-two inches. So thirty-two